All right, so this week we're gonna start with a little review of the immune system, specifically the innate immune system, uh, one that we learned a fair amount about in the beginning of last week. So first and foremost, we know that the innate immune system is a rapid response. It is ideally happening within the first zero to four hours uh, and within or up to 96 hours of invasion by a microbe or a pathogen of some kind. Now, there are various cell types within the innate immune system, but the innate immune system itself is nonspecific. So being nonspecific and not being able to recognize the flu virus in particular or uh, Staphylococcus aureus in particular, which is a bacteria, innate immune system cells rely on a certain type of recognition receptor. They have pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs. These PRRs on the innate immune cells recognize patterns on certain pathogens or microbes. And these patterns on the pathogen or microbe are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs. So we have PRRs, which recognize PAMPs. And this is how cells of the innate immune system, like dendritic cells and macrophages, uh, basophils, xenophils, that's how all of these cells recognize invaders to our bodies. Now, these cells also play a really important role in kind of souping the immune system up, right? Getting the body and the host ready to fight back. And that's by secreting inflammatory proteins known as cytokines that help to promote inflammation. And there are even certain types of proteins that these cells, innate immune system cells, can secrete, secrete called chemokines, which are going to draw in and attract other immune cells to the site of where this microbe or pathogen is. An important characteristic of the innate immune system is the lack of memory that's established. Uh, no matter what the infection, no matter how many times you're infected with the same pathogen or uh, invading microbe, there is no memory in your innate immune system. Your innate immune cells are always gonna use those PRRs to rec recognize PAMPs on the pathogens, all right? And as a result, the kinetics or the speed with which your innate immune system responds to an invading pathogen or microbe is always going to be the same, depending on that microbe. It's never gonna increase or decrease by a, a significant margin because there is no memory established. Now we'll talk a little bit more here about inflammation. Just know that this is not an exhaustive uh, slide on everything inflammation does and, and what it can do for our body. Um, inflammation is a good thing in general. It happens quite a bit in our bodies. Uh, systemic or full body inflammation is referred to as shock and that is bad and you can, uh, the end result can be death. So full body inflammation, not that great, but inflammation at the sites of infection is perfect for what we need to do. So what's gonna happen during inflammation is additional effector molecules and cells, they're gonna to rush to the site of the infection via the blood um, in order to clear said infection. Now, also within this increased blood flow, you're gonna have induced blood clotting in certain parts of the body called microvessels. This uh, blood clotting in the microvessels is in an attempt to stop this microbe or pathogen from disseminating. Uh, or spreading to any other parts of the body. And ultimately, this inflammation does promote repair of injured tissue. So when you see a part of your body is inflamed uh, by the bottom symptoms, right? Pain, redness, heat, or swelling, just know that it's a good thing. Like that's your body's recognition of a problem and the problem's getting fixed. So I just wanted to include uh, this little chart for us. Uh, it again, is not an exhaustive list. There are more to each of these. Uh, but these are some barriers to infection. These are the non-cellular components of the innate immune system. These are the things that we have set up in us uh, to naturally ward off infection. Um, we have mechanical, chemical, and microbiological. This is the one I want to draw your attention most to at the bottom is microbiological because we have been colonized by so many different species of bacteria. So, so many. We are actually more bacteria than we are human cells. So these bacteria play a huge role in our health and our immune system and keeping other pathogens at bay, especially, especially fungal infections, which we'll talk about uh, in our infectious disease portion of this uh, class. 
So you can review this at your leisure. Uh, if you have any questions on it, let me know. Be happy to uh, answer some stuff about our natural barriers. So what I want to talk about now is kind of what we're going to talk about really in this uh, screencast in general is macrophages and dendritic cells. For us, for our understanding right now, the two most important innate immune cells in the immune response. Now, dendritic cells and macrophages are called phagocytes. They're in a broader group of cells called phagocytes, and phagocytes actually engulf or take in their uh, the pathogen or the microbe that they're focused on or that they're trying to clear, and they take them in into something called a phagosome. This phagosome has an increased acidity that's going to cause uh, um, disassociation of the microbe or the pathogen in some way. Um, it's going to destabilize it. It's going to break it down, basically. It's going to denature it. And it breaks it down into its pieces, and some pieces, some protein parts of it, will get shuttled to the cell membrane of the macrophage or the dendritic cell and displayed on its surface. Macrophages and dendritic cells from this point become what are called antigen-presenting cells. So they're going to take this piece of protein from that pathogen that they broke down, that they absorbed, and they're going to take it and show it to the T cells that are involved in the adaptive immune response. They're going to present this antigen, which is a protein, on average, almost always, to uh, T cells, and that's going to activate the adaptive immune response and to a degree produce a certain amount of memory. So that if we are reinfected with the same pathogen or microbe, it won't take up to 96 hours for your adaptive response to get into gear. Now there are other uh, innate immune cells, and these, these lists I'm showing you on the left, these are not exhaustive lists, there are other innate immune cells as well, um, but there, we're not going to really talk much about these, just know that uh, the other broad group was called phagocytes, which take in their invading microbe or pathogen to destroy it, and then there are granulocytes, which contain intracellular vesicles that have these toxic enzymes, and they use these toxic enzymes to kill invading microbes or pathogens rather than taking them in. Okay, so there's macrophages and granulocytes, and each cell you see pictured here and here fall into one of those categories of innate immune cells. Okay, so let's talk about dendritic cells, also known as DCs for short. Dendritic cells are the bridge. Dendritic cells are what link your innate immune system to your adaptive immune response, and they are of the utmost importance. So we know dendritic cells are macrophages. I'm sorry. Dendritic cells are not macrophages. They are, those are different cells. Dendritic cells are phagocytes, meaning they take in their uh, invading pathogen or their microbe. And they'll break it down inside this phagosome, this vesicle they, they took them in, in in with, and then they'll take the pieces of that pathogen and present them as antigen on their cell membranes. Now, when they take these things in, these pathogens, microbes, and present these antigens, they become antigen-presenting cells that they will then go to the lymph tissue where T cells are of the adaptive immune system and present these antigens. They're like, look, this is what's in our host right now. You need to get into gear and the T cells will see that and get moving quickly, which initiates the adaptive immune response and inevitably generates some degree of memory. Some viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites produce better memory responses than others. And we'll talk about that down the road. Now, I did mention that dendritic cells are the bridge uh, between the innate and adaptive immune response, and that's important to know because throughout our time so far, we've uh, referred to as the innate immune system as one arm and the adaptive immune system as the other arm of immunity. Well, there are two arms, right? And they're both needed and they're both connected, okay? You can't, the innate immune system is great because it buys the adaptive immune system time. If we didn't have the innate immune system, the adaptive immune response that we have, the, how long it takes, it wouldn't be fast enough and it's likely these invading microbes and pathogens would kill us before the adaptive immune response could catch up. So the innate immune system buys time. And in some respects, the innate immune system can clear infections, all right? They can do it all their own sometimes. Um, and again, remember, dendritic cells recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. And that's how they recognize an invading pathogen or microbe. And then they take these antigens that they derive from this pathogen or microbe and present it to our cells in the adaptive immune response. In particular, they usually uh, present to CD4 
positive helper T cells. Those cells are then going to send out chemical signals in the form of uh, cytokines determining whether it's a humoral response, with, which will be an antibody-mediated response generated by B cells, or if it's going to be a cell-mediated response, a cell-mediated response coming from CD8 or cytotoxic T cells. All right, and macrophages, the other type, the other really important phagocyte within the um, innate immune response. They function the same way that dendritic cells do. They take in the invading microbe or pathogen, um, break it down in the phagosome, and they do present the antigens on the macrophage surface. And again, remember, antigens are protein components of that uh, invading microbe or pathogen. Now, you find macrophages in almost all your body's tissues, okay? They take up residence there. They stay there. They are long-lived in your tissues. They'll stay alive in your body tissues like muscle, bone, uh, uh, nervous to a certain extent. Actually, let's take that back. Not so much nervous system. The nervous system is a special place within the body. Um, your uh, parts of your fat, your skin uh, tissue, your mu mucosal tissue. Um, but when they're circulating in the blood, the circulating version of a macrophage is called a monocyte. Okay, so the circulating of the circulating version of a macrophage is a monocyte, and when that monocyte reaches a tissue like, say, muscle or or your epithelium uh, within your body, that's when they mature into macrophages and they uh, begin to engulf and kill invading microorganisms, and they orchestrate the uh, immune response through the induction of inflammation, right? By producing these cytokines to produce inflammation and chemokines to draw in other innate immune cells. And also inflammation also draws in other immune cells. Alrighty, so that's where we're gonna stop with this presentation and I'll see you in the next one.